Hello everyone. Uh, this video series is about uh, performing modal analysis using ANSYS Workbench, and this is the first video wherein I will just uh, show you uh, the flow of performing modal analysis in ANSYS Workbench. So I will not be concentrating more on uh, proper meshing or say proper boundary conditions and all those things. But uh, in this video, my aim is just to show you how to perform a modal analysis using ANSYS Workbench. And for this, we will take example of this symbol, which is played by a drummer. Uh, now, for those of you who, who are drummers, uh, I need not tell you anything about this symbol as such. But uh, for people like me who don't play drum uh, or have never uh, used this symbol, for them, uh, this symbol is not of the uniform thickness okay the thickness here at the center is thick and then as you go away from this center the thickness goes on reducing and this at the edge it will be thinnest all right uh, now this uh, area uh, around the center of the symbol this area is called as from right from here around this region this is called as bell or cup okay usually a drummer hit this area to obtain a clear or a bright tone right and then uh, if say if, if a drummer wants to open up immediately if he wants to open up the sound immediately then they hit uh, in this region which is a thinnest uh, region of this symbol and it is sometimes it is also called as a crash area all right this is also called as a crash area and then the region in between this uh, bell and the crash area this region is, is is called as a ride area okay ride area uh, now for a non drummer like me the only thing which you need to take from this is that the thickness is not uniform here the thickness uh, goes on decreasing from the center of this symbol towards the edge all right so thickness is not constant here so with this brief introduction to what is symbol, um, we'll, we'll straight away we'll move now to ANSYS uh, Workbench. So this is how the ANSYS Workbench uh, window or the user interface looks like. Everybody is aware of it. Okay, uh, if you cannot find this uh, analysis system, uh, you know from where to get it, right? You can go to just view and if you click on this toolbox, uh, you'll be able to see all of this okay now since we want to perform the modal analysis what we need to do is we need to drag and drop this model from here in the project schematic now this will give you a proper flow or to carry out a modal analysis okay now the first thing is we need to define the engineering data you can just right click on this and then the symbols are uh, mostly made up of brass okay so for that what you what you need to do is just go to engineering data source and then click on this ANSYS Granta and uh, you'll be able to see what all are the different materials here. Uh, basically, we want a brass material, right? So you can just look up and then you will get this brass material. What you can do is you can just click add to. So this will add this material to our uh, engineering data or to our library. Fine. Here you can see that this brass is added now along with structural steel. Now at this stage what you can do is just right click on this brass material and then say default uh, solid material for model. Of course you can change this material later on also because uh, now what will happen is ANSYS by default it will assign this material to our geometry. Of, you can change it later on but um, anyways. Then since the engineering data has been defined it is a always it is a better habit to save this project at every stage okay so what i can do is i can just click on save and then i'll just click here i'll i'll, I'll go to particular any particular folder and then i will name this project as model analysis okay model analysis and then i'll save this project now about the geometry, I will not be creating any geometry as such. I will directly import because I already have the geometry with me. Even you can uh, download it from ANSYS website, right? And then what I will do is I will straight away open this model, model, okay? 
Now this will, uh, if, if I just right click on this model and click on edit, it will open a mechanical model window depending upon your computer speed, I mean computer RAM and processor speed, uh, it will take some time to open this mechanical model window. So once you are in mechanical window, uh, just see here that uh, uh, just in front of this geometry, there is this question mark. That means some data is missing. You need to give some data to this geometry. Uh, just click on this geometry and then see here there is a yellow tab. That means it is asking for thickness. But uh, if you remember, the thickness uh, I said is not constant for the symbol, right? It, it, it goes on decreasing from center area to the edge. So what we'll do is here we'll just give some dummy thickness and then we'll properly define the thickness later on. All right. So I'll just put here one. And then uh, again, please remember this is just the dummy thickness. All right. We'll override this uh, thickness with a proper uh, thickness function. Uh, then see the material what we have assigned to this is a brass now because I had uh, made this brass as a default material. Even if you don't do, do that and then if here you see the material material as structural steel, you can just click here, you can click on arrow and then the other materials which are defined will show up here. You can just click it and then you can change the material as well. Okay. Now coming to the proper thickness before that just make sure that your units are proper all right if you click here on the units see that uh, your units are in metric system and not in any other system just to be consistent with other uh, units okay so here uh, mm kg newton second looks fine for us uh, all right now about uh, providing the proper thickness so in that case what you need to do is uh, you can just uh, right click on this geometry say insert and then say thickness all right and then the geometry to which we will define this is this geometry so right click on this and then say select this geometry and then say apply so basically what we have done is we will be apply whatever thickness function we will be applying we will apply it to entire symbol okay now just before that uh, i would like to define a new coordinate system okay now the, the the problem with uh, this is now our global coordinate system is here and symbol is somewhere here all right so i don't have a proper relation between uh, the symbol and the global coordinate system so uh, so better uh, we define one more local coordinate system for this symbol okay how to do that is on the coordinate system you can just right click on this say insert and then say coordinate okay and then change this uh, coordinate from Cartesian to cylindrical. All right, change it to from Cartesian to cylindrical. Uh, geometry, what you need to do is just uh, select this entire geometry and then say apply. Right, uh, it has uh, applied to this geometry. Uh, now, basically, we need to orient it in proper direction. Okay, so what I will do is I will change this axis. I will change this axis from X to Z. All right, but I want to uh, align that Z with this uh, global Y axis. Okay, I want to align this Z axis with the global Y axis. So for that, what I will do is I will change this global X axis to global Y axis. All right. So this looks a proper uh, coordinate system as it is. This is a symmetric about now this entire symbol is symmetric about the Z axis. So this looks a proper coordinate system. Okay, once I have this coordinate system, I'll again go back to this thickness and then I'll just click on this and then I'll say function. Okay, I'll change it to function. Now, once you change it to function, I will have to enter a function and according to that function, the thickness will change from change from what? It will change from this coordinate to here. Okay, uh, again, please remember uh, we have already defined a proper coordinate system. That is a new coordinate system that is a with that is with the name of coordinate system so just change that coordinate system this is from global coordinate system to this local coordinate system All right so uh, now whatever thickness we are defining it is with respect to now this local coordinate system that is very important okay so i took uh, this function now the function which i will define here i took it from the ansys website itself so basically that function says uh, the thickness is varying according to now this function that is 2 minus x divided by 150 
multiplied by the whole thing is multiplied by 1.3 okay so basically now this thickness is varying from this center all right uh, and it is going on decreasing towards its edge okay uh, which we'll be able to see actually later on all right so this is how i have defined the thickness here and then once you define the thickness the next thing is basically a meshing uh, step so there shouldn't be any problem with that uh, what we can do is directly we can right click on this and then we can say generate mesh right uh, let us see what default mesh ansys gives us it is generating mesh and then all right the default mesh doesn't look that bad uh, as i told you earlier also my aim here is not to show you uh, how to do the meshing and all but i just want to demonstrate the flow of performing the model analysis using ansys workbench okay and then you will be able to observe the thickness also here after meshing look at the thickness here uh, look at the thickness here uh, and then look at the thickness at the edge right compared to the thickness at the center compared to the thickness at the center definitely the thickness at the edge is small right and that is because the function which we had given uh, that is that is uh, because the thickness we had not defined as a constant value but we had said that the thickness changes uh, according to this equation anyways so we have defined now what is thickness and we have also discretized it we have meshed it properly all right uh, in fact you can see it here also right the thickness uh, changes uh, accordingly uh, it goes from 1.9 mm to 0.7 mm that is fine all right so we have done all the things now we need to do the setup basically we need to define the uh, boundary condition here so boundary condition what we can do is uh, we can say that uh, we'll give a fixed support at this inner edge truly speaking it is uh, it is not that fixed as such but uh, as i told you again uh, we are not looking at the exact boundary conditions here our aim is just to watch the uh, flow of performing model analysis so what i will do is i'll take uh, this edge and then i'll select this inside edge all right and then i'll say apply so basically what we have done we have fixed this edge one more thing the thickness which we have applied has got evenly distributed on on either side right so if the thickness here is say 1.9 so half of the 1.9 is above this edge and half of the 1.9 is below this edge all right uh, so we have defined the boundary condition now basically what we need to do is we need to tell the software how many modes uh, the software need to extract for that what you can do you can just click here on the analysis setting and by default it will extract only six mode let us uh, extract around 24 modes right uh, so basically software will extract 24 natural frequencies and the corresponding uh, 24 uh, mode shapes of this symbol okay i think we are done here only thing is um, as a good practice i would like to save this project before uh, asking it to solve i have just pressed ctrl s all right or what you can do is you can you can say file and save project that is always a good practice all right now since we have saved this what we what we'll do is we'll right click on the solution and we'll say solve so again depending upon your uh, ram and processor it will take some time to solve this okay you can see here it is building the mathematical model and so on okay so all that will be done now okay so i think it has solved uh, we have it has solved properly and then it has uh, extracted all the 24 modes which we had asked right now if you want to look at the results properly if you want to visualize the mode shape what you need to do is whatever modes it has extracted select them select all the modes how you can do that is first select the first uh, frequency just go down press shift and select the last frequency so it will select all the modes all right it will select all the modes uh, and then what you can do is you can just right click on this and then say create mode shape results 
so it will create the mode shape results but if you click here now nothing will be visible because we need to ask software to evaluate all the results so what you can do just right click on the solution and then say evaluate all results so now it has evaluated all the results and if you want to see how it will perform at the first natural frequency so by the way the first natural frequency we have found it as 62.45 hertz and the second natural frequency is also very close okay so and if you want to observe a mode shape for this first natural first natural frequency you can just hit the play button right uh, basically uh, the first mode shape is uh, a kind of it is it is oscillating over its uh, uh, fixed uh, boundary condition right we had fixed it here uh, on its origin uh, here at the center we had fixed it so it is just oscillating about its fixed position so this is our first mode shape if, uh, second mode shape will be uh, also similar to that because the frequencies are very close but it will oscillate about some other axis earlier it was oscillating about z axis right now it is oscillating about i think x axis or something i'm not sure okay anyways but if you look at the third uh if you look at the third this uh, mode shape uh for this uh, frequency of 66.51 hertz uh, this is a bit different mode shape right from that of the first two mode shapes it is a kind of what is a kind of a bending mode okay and then fourth will be again very similar to third uh, let us see what is the fifth mode shape okay so this is the fifth mode shape and then similarly i think six will be almost similar let us see what is the seventh mode shape all right uh, it is twisting it is getting twisted all right it is getting twisted so basically all this mode shape uh, and the frequency we can help us to do the further dynamic analysis all right if somebody wants to perform the harmonic analysis or say a random excitation analysis or something they can take the help of this uh, of course we will do some tutorials on that also in the later stages but i think this uh, is sufficient for this video